Hello friend, welcome back to Acre Homestead. We've got a couple pretty serious garden issues we need to address, two in particular. We've got some harvesting we need to do, or get to do I should say, and we're gonna make dinner tonight. We are going to make a peanut pasta. It's gonna be really good. But first thing I need to do is get my new favorite weeding tool. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and grab a kneeling pad too because we're gonna be in the garden for a little bit. And I think that's the only thing we need in this ship. I have made a grave mistake in feeding the birds. And I will show you what that is in just a minute. But first we need to get some more supplies before we head out into the garden. I am struggling with a major soil deficiency in my garden. When I did the soil test back probably about two months ago now, I can show you the results right here. It said that I had a major nitrogen deficiency and nitrogen is a very important nutrient for plants. And I amended each bed with bone meal according to the packaging and what I should do, but it was not enough. And so I can see that my plants are suffering. So what I did is I ordered a 50 pound bag of blood meal, which is basically nitrogen. So we are going to amend each bed, not each bed, I'm gonna amend each plant with this fertilizer. This is the, what brand is this? The down to earth brand, which I have purchased before. I like this fertilizer, it's organic. It comes in compostable packaging. And I really like this fertilizer brand. And it was much more affordable for me to buy it in a 50 pound bag than it was for me to buy the three pound boxes. I think that's what they are, they're three or five pounds. And because I have 20 beds out there and my beds are so depleted in nitrogen, I figured this was the way to go. But each one of the plants needs to be fertilized and fed. It doesn't actually have an odor to it, which is great. I was reading on the packaging how much I should feed the plants. And it says that for established plants, they need one to two teaspoons depending on the plant. So we're gonna start probably with one teaspoon per plant. So I grabbed a half gallon mason jar and a spoon and a, my canning funnel. Now I can smell it. We are gonna work our way from the backyard, which is basically just the landscape lawn area, down to the garden. And I'm gonna show you how much my plants are suffering and we will kind of work our way down the garden. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to address a grave, grave mistake that I have made when it comes to my bird feeders. Since this landscape project started, I wanted to get myself bird feeders and I got myself one there and I have one tucked over here. And I just bought bird seed at the store, not knowing anything about bird seed. And my mom quickly, she came over and she said, Becky, you do not want this bird seed. It is going to sprout and I learned the hard way that I have now created a huge mess for myself that's gonna take me a while to eradicate this problem. The bird seed that I put in here has created a massive disaster for me. So I need to come in here and weed all of this. There's sunflower, this is a sunflower, that's a sunflower, that's a sunflower, and this is all millet that has sprouted. And it is all in here where the birds and squirrels have dropped the bird seed. So as soon as my mom told me that, I emptied the bird seed from the bird seed that would sprout. And Josh and I had been so enjoying the birds, we were a little devastated that, one, that I had made this disaster. It's okay, it will just take time for me to eradicate the problem. But we didn't wanna give up the dream of watching birds out our window. So what I did is I went online and I Googled 
no sprouting bird seed. And I found this and I'm really excited. Let me show you. This right here is the culprit that is gonna be going to the chickens. I'm not putting any more of this in my birdhouses, but I got two bags of this no grow wild bird food. And it also is no mess. Because the sunflower seeds are already holed, and so they're not gonna be eating the sunflower seed and putting the hole on the ground. So if you also want to have bird feeders, but you don't want the huge mess with the weed problem, this is what I would recommend, I guess. I haven't really used it. I can link it down below, but I haven't used it for long enough to know if it indeed is perfect for the job. To keep the mess from getting everywhere, I should fill it in this bucket, and then this will be my bird feeder bucket. So any of the extra bird feed will just fall into this tote. this inside because that's my canning funnel and if I leave it out here next time I need to do a canning project I will be very sad that I don't know where it is. Another thing that we are going to go put out into the garden on the patio and down in the main garden are these little insect feeders or waterers. Bee, they're called bee cups or pollinator cups. This was a gift and I cannot wait to put it out. They are just basically little insect water. So instead of having like a big bird bath, it's basically a little where they can sit on the edge and drink. And I'm really so happy to have this. I got a really beautiful letter with this and it was just awesome. So thank you. And I'm so excited to put these out in the garden. I can link this down below. They're called bee cups. Bee cups are tiny porcelain cups that collect small amounts of water for bees, butterflies, and other pollinators. So I'm gonna put these where I know my irrigation will hit them and the cups will always stay full with water. And we will get these bird feeders hung back up. I'll be back for the cups. These little insect cups are so fun and I have been able to put them in areas where my irrigation hits them and where I water. I hand water my green stalks and these pots and so I just make sure I keep them full and it has been so fun to watch the insects. So not only now am I an avid bird watcher, I am an avid insect watcher and it is so fun. So this green stalk here that you can see right with those round leaves, those are nasturtiums growing in that green stalk. And I see so many hummingbirds enjoy those flowers and it's so fun. And now I'm hanging up my bird feeders for the other type of birds to enjoy this bird seed <laughs> and Josh and I, it was funny, we were talking and I, I even have, it's hard to see, but there is a sunflower little bird bath there that is, it's glass and I just keep it full with water. And when I was setting that up, I was setting it up right after I got these bird feeders and Josh was like, your inner old lady is showing and I am here for it. I love it. <laughs> I love enjoying my coffee, watching the birds and Josh and I both actually have been really enjoying watching the birds. I had posted on Instagram a few of the birds that I have found or watched come and enjoy the property. And a few of you guys had recommended the app. It's I think it's Merlin. It's a free bird identification app and it is incredible. You can take a blurry photo, put it on there and it'll tell you what bird it is. And that has been so fun. And so I'm just really glad that I found this bird seed because spoiler alert, the new bird seed is fantastic and I'm not gonna have to worry about these types of messes happening again. Because these seeds are growing in mulch, they are really easy to disturb the roots. And this is what I do every few days. It doesn't usually get this bad. Normally, you know, I find like 10 or 20 little sprouts and I just take my little weeder and I go around and disturb the roots. And I don't think I created a massive problem. When I found this, I was devastated. I was thinking, oh my goodness, what did I do? But 
If I keep on top of it because they're growing in mulch and if I don't let the roots get into the native soil, I think that by the end of the summer, I should have been able to eradicate this problem that I created. Sorry if you can hear my neighbor mowing. It's a beautiful day and so it's a good day to mow. But I found something that I know I did not put in my bird feeders. This is crazy. I found this yesterday. I have no idea where it came from. And that is this plant right here. That I'm pretty sure is a potato. And I have no idea how a potato ended up in the landscaping. I don't really want potatoes growing in my landscaping, so I am gonna pull it up. But it's so weird. I mean, I'm pretty sure, you can tell me otherwise if that's not a potato, but I'm pretty sure that's a potato. This is my plan to keep my little weeding tool on my back deck. And as I see the millet sprouts come up, they're super easy to dig up right now. I will just start digging them up. I can't really pull them all, there's so many of them. And so this is gonna be a very long process to eradicate this problem that I've created, but it is what it is. Learn more, do better, and I won't plant this kind of, or put this kind of, that kind of bird seed in my bird feeders next time. But it's okay, let's go out into the garden and have some fun in the vegetable garden. I only have a few beds in the garden that don't have weed fabric and they definitely grow weeds. So I need to get in here and weed this entire bed so that it doesn't affect the carrots. We have carrots planted in here in between all the onions and these onions are definitely suffering from malnutrition. I mean, you can see all these weeds in here that need to be picked. So I'm gonna get them fed, I'm gonna get them weeded, and then I'm gonna get them thinned. These carrots were not pelleted carrots when I planted them, and so they were very difficult to plant. So some of them are way too close together, so I need to thin them out so that they're not so close together so they can actually grow in size. So weed. Let that dry out there. And then over here, the same thing, but I did not do, I did pelleted carrots over here. So they don't need to be thinned as much because the pelleted carrots were easier to plant, proper spacing, like that one needs to be thinned. But they need to be weeded and they need to be fed. These onions are suffering from malnutrition. So we're gonna get them fed and weeded. These two onion beds too are the onion beds where the onion starts came pretty moldy. And so I don't know if that's part of it. I think, honestly, I think the biggest problem is the malnutrition. And uh, this could be embarrassing, like I could be embarrassed to show you this, but this is the reality of gardening. And I want to share with you that it takes time and years to improve soil, to build gardens. And I just put in what I could afford at the time to fill these beds. So it was a mix of topsoil, compost, and sand. And so at the end of the year, I am going to top dress all of these beds with compost and I'm gonna prep them, amend them, and get them ready for next spring. And hopefully we can just over the years build up the soil. It takes time to build a really nutrient dense soil. And so I don't want you to be discouraged that if not everything you plant in your first year garden doesn't produce this massive abundance, that's okay. We live in the 21st century. Thankfully, we are not dependent on our own gardening abilities as much as I would love, you know, to be able to produce as much produce for Josh and I. I am still learning in this skill, and so I can still go to the farmer's market and buy local produce. I can go to the grocery store and buy produce, and it's something that we're going to work on building the soil together over the years. It's really interesting to see how the different plants are doing because some of the plants in the same soil are doing fine and they look like they're thriving. And then some like these onions 
are stunted. One thing I am just now remembering is when my dad and I fed these beds the original time, we ran out of the blood meal that was recommended for this whole entire lower row. And so this hasn't been amended at all. So I did go a little bit heavier on the blood meal on these two beds because they didn't get their initial feeding. But now I'm gonna go around and show you the areas that are really suffering and why this needs to happen very quickly. So here's the bed that's right above this onion bed and it is a cabbage bed. These are all red cabbages, but down here, these are supposed to be green. <laughs> these are supposed to be green and they have completely turned purple and yellowing and they do not have enough nutrients. So these need to be amended very quickly here. And then I am gonna also feed the corn. Corn is a very heavy feeder. And down here, they need to be fed as well. It takes time to build soil and build nutrients in your soil. And this is the first year <laughs> these beds have anything in them. So I'm just learning how to go, learning what to do. And the fact that I have a soil test that I could lean on is awesome. I can link my soil test down below, but you can see this is celery. Celery should not be yellow. <laughs> celery should be green. So this is seriously suffering from a nitrogen deficiency and these black beans are seriously suffering from nitrogen deficiency as well. They are bouncing back because I fed them with just the all-purpose fertilizer, but they need a, a good feeding of just nitrogen. About a week ago, this entire bed, all of the plants were yellow and I fed them three times with the all-purpose fertilizer I had and now they're bouncing back and the new growth is green. So that's good that the new growth is green. They are stunted, definitely, but I think that if I keep feeding them, they will bounce back. I will show you some beans that were planted the exact same day as these ones in the green stock. This is what those black beans should look like right here. Green and beautiful. And that's not what they're looking like. Those beans were planted the same day as these ones. They're twice the size because they are planted in the green stock, which has a potting mix with a slow release fertilizer in it. And it's a more balanced nutrition for the plant versus these beds where the nutrition is a little bit off balance. So we're learning our garden, we're learning our bed, we're figuring out what is best for them and we're just going, going with it. So time to start feeding these beds. One of the really cool things is I just found a resource for some local organic compost. I had gone to the farmer's market and this farmer who grows not even 20 minutes away from me had these beautiful radishes and I was asking him, how in the world do you grow these beautiful radishes? They're huge. And he was telling me about his methods and where he buys his organic compost. And I was feeling a little bit sad thinking I didn't, know that there was a resource for this in my local area. I tried to do, you know, all the research before filling these beds and I did not find this one company. And I even Googled after I talked to him to try to find this company. Well, I can already say I'm definitely glad I bought the 50 pound bag because I'm going through quite a bit of it. Every bed is being amended today so that I could just see how it goes moving forward. And I, it still didn't show up. So I have the name of the company and that is the place where I'm going to be buying my organic compost from now on. That is one of the cool things about getting into your local community and talking to the local farmers and the local growers and picking their brains and figuring out how are they doing what they're doing and how are they doing it so well? <laughs> because the proof is there. If you can, you know, go to the farmer's market and you can see this abundance and beautiful, you know, array of produce that they're able to grow and ask them and trust me do not be embarrassed or intimidated to ask your local farmers at the farmers market what they do because farmers are passionate about what they do and they want to share it with 
everybody. And so that's the cool thing about kind of getting into your community and learning from the people that grow in your area. So I am working with what I have here. We are going to do our best to try to get as best of an abundance as we can get out of this garden. But I am also going to continue to rely on the people that do this better than I do. The local growers that grow and they know what they're doing because I can have fun in my garden. I can try to learn and do better every year. And then whatever I can't do, I can supplement with people that do it really well. Now, this has not been a total loss. There has been an abundance of stuff that I've already gotten out of this garden and I'm grateful for every little bit that I can grow. But I'm just sharing with you that if you have a garden and it is not as abundant or prolific as you want it to be the first year, don't give up. Gardening is a learned skill. It's, you know, continuing to just learn every year. And I feel like I am a brand new gardener this year because I'm working with a new garden, a new climate, new beds that haven't been amended because the last beds I had been amending them <laughs> with compost and horse manure and all the things for a long time so i'm just excited that you know we're we're starting new and we're in it together so i just harvested some broccoli those were some broccoli side shoots i had already harvested the main broccoli head and they're producing side shoots and now i'm out here harvesting the garlic scapes this is the flowering head of my elephant garlic and we're going to bring this inside this stuff is incredible if you've never tried garlic scapes, go to your local farmer's markets. They probably have them for you to try now. I am gonna put these garlic scapes directly into the free, well, I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna freeze them or if I'm gonna blend them up into a garlic paste. One of my favorite things that I have preserved ever are my little garlic pucks. I love them. I think I'm gonna turn this into garlic pucks. I don't have the time to do that right now, so what I'm gonna do is bend them, stick them into one of my green produce bags. I love these during garden season because they help keep my garden produce fresh until I have time to preserve them. I don't always have time to preserve the item right when I harvest it, so I'm gonna take these garlic seeds, stick them into the fridge, and now we're gonna get dinner going. We're gonna make a really easy dinner. We're gonna make a peanut pasta salad with chicken that I'm gonna meal prep. I'm gonna make a good amount so that we can enjoy it for dinner tonight. And then we can have it for lunches for the next couple days. So I'm going to wash up this broccoli that I harvested. I have some more broccoli in my refrigerator that I harvested a couple days ago. We're gonna wash that up too. And let me see. This shouldn't take very long to throw this together, but we're gonna get a pot of boiling water on. This is gonna be a cold salad. This morning I pulled out some just plain chicken breast from the freezer. And I got those thawed. I got two chicken breasts that we're gonna grill up for dinner tonight because I thought that that would go well, I'll season it, but I thought that that would go better than any of the marinades that I have in my freezer right now. The flavor profiles that I have of the pre-made marinades just don't match peanut sauce. And then I did grab out one marinated chicken that needs to, I'm gonna go ahead and grill it at the same time so that we can enjoy salad probably for dinner tonight. And I'll just meal prep the chicken since I'm already gonna be having the grill go, I might as well grill up more chicken than what we need for dinner tonight. Okay, so let me wash the produce. These are the veggies that I'm going to use in the pasta salad. And the first thing I'm gonna do is grate up two carrots. I did some of this prep earlier and I just had these pre-grated, pre-washed carrots in the fridge. So we're gonna get them grated. And now I have some red cabbage that I'm gonna cut really, really thin, as thin as I can. And I'm gonna cut about half of this red cabbage. When I'm cutting things really thin, the key is to have a really sharp knife and you use your knuckle and you're actually brushing the knife along your knuckle. So I put my fingernail back and then I put my knuckle out a little bit 
and I run the knife along my finger to try to get a really thin slice. And I always keep my fingers tucked in like this, not like this. You don't wanna hold stuff like this because then you're more likely to cut your finger. So tuck it in and rest that knife right up against your knuckle. This recipe is a type of recipe I love. It's a one pot meal. It's gonna have a ton of veggies. It's gonna have some pasta and it's going to have some protein. So I'm not gonna make any other meal tonight or side dish or anything like that because it's all in one. Now I've never made this particular recipe before. I will link it down below. I just found it on Pinterest. I am modifying it a little bit in that the recipe calls for radishes. I don't have any more homegrown radishes in the garden right now that are ready for harvesting. So I'm skipping the radish, but I'm gonna add the broccoli that I harvested today, plus the broccoli that I harvested out of the garden the other day. So we're just gonna substitute radish for broccoli, and then I am going to make twice as much pasta as it says. The recipe doesn't call for chicken, and I'm adding chicken. And so I'm going to double the dressing too because I think the dressing is going to be the best part and because I'm doubling the pasta and the veggies really I want to make sure that there's enough dressing to go on the entire thing and then whatever if I don't use all the dressing for dinner tonight a peanut sauce style dressing is not going to go to waste in this house that is for sure this is a really good kind of summery dinner I think by the time the chicken's cooked and the pasta's cooked, we'll have the dressing made and the veggies prepped. I'm gonna cut the broccoli into smaller bite-sized pieces and I'm gonna blanch this in the water once the pasta is almost done so that it's a little bit cooked, but not fully cooked. Just so that it has a little bit of that raw flavor cooked out of it. The recipe called for egg noodles, and I don't know exactly what that meant. I don't know what Asian style egg noodles are, so I have just this whole wheat pasta, spaghetti pasta that we're gonna use in substitution for that. And I can't figure out how long they're supposed to cook for. Let me get it in the water, at the very least, so that can start to cook. I'm gonna cook one pound. The original recipe calls for eight ounces, so I'm basically doubling it so that I have meal prepped. Yeah, I think I should have the rest of this meal put together. Let's get the chicken on the grill next. I don't like cooking chicken breasts that are intact completely. I like to butterfly them open because I think they cook a little bit faster and more evenly, and so they don't dry out as much. So I'm gonna cut these in half and I'm gonna get them seasoned up really well. I'm not gonna do anything fancy though with it. I'm just gonna do some salt and pepper on each side because I think the dressing will have enough yummy flavor to it. I did wash my hands really well. For the last minute and a half of cooking, I threw the broccoli in there and I'm gonna let the broccoli cook just for a minute. Now we're gonna make the dressing. I did not realize how little peanut butter I have in my house. So we're just gonna make as much of this dressing as we can with the amount of peanut butter we have. There's a little bit of honey in here. So this is peanut butter and honey. Now I'm gonna add a garlic puck. This is coconut aminos, but you could use this or soy sauce. Coconut Minos has a little bit of a sweeter flavor. I have some of our chive blossom vinegar. 
I'm out of rice wine vinegar too, so if I had that, I would use that. We're gonna put some homemade sriracha. This is not in the recipe, but I'm gonna add it. It's just a little bit of ginger. Sesame oil. Oh, that's not sesame oil, that's right. White, red wine vinegar. This is sesame oil, salt, and some pepper. I should get a whisk. All right, let's give this a taste test. I hope that's enough dressing. Cheers. I can link the original recipe down below that I found on Pinterest. Oh man, that is delicious. Now it's more of a vinaigrette than like a peanut sauce dressing, I would say. You can definitely taste the peanut sauce, but or the peanut butter. I I would like it a little bit more peanut buttery, -y, but I don't have any more peanut butter. So we're just going with what we got here. So now what I'm gonna do is add all of our veggies. I hope my bowl is big enough because this is a huge salad that I'm making. I did not realize how much I am making here. I don't know if the chicken is gonna fit in here too. Maybe we'll have to just put the chicken on the top. And I've got a bunch of cilantro here we're gonna go ahead and add. But I first need to chop that up. Had to get a new knife. I'm gonna keep this cilantro in pretty decent sized pieces. I did strain the pasta and it's cooling along with the broccoli. I want big chunks of cilantro. If you don't like cilantro, leave it out. To add the peanut flavor, I'm gonna chop up some peanuts and some crunch it'll add. Just a rough chop. Our pasta and our broccoli. Yep, that doesn't fit very well. This is a massive <laughs> salad that I made here. big guns my Jay Morella size bowl so that I can stir this good thing this is something that will keep in the fridge really well and leftovers will be delicious because we are gonna have a lot of leftovers and I might have to make some more dressing I might just put some more ingredients on the top because I don't know if the amount of dressing I made is gonna coat all the veggies and the pasta but my word does this smell incredible. This salad was so good and it held up really well in the fridge. It made a really nice light summer lunch for the next quite a few days. I would say this recipe is inspired by the recipe. I'm gonna link down below because I just added a little bit more of everything because there wasn't quite enough to coat everything. And this is more of a vinaigrette with a hint of peanut flavor than like a peanut dressing, which is what I was kind of going for. It tastes delicious. I just wish I had more peanut butter. But I've got this all mixed in now. Oh my, this is gonna be really good, even with not the amount of peanut butter I was hoping for. Because I have this big bowl out, I'm gonna go ahead and get the chicken cut up. And I'm gonna cut this pretty small, just into like bite-sized pieces. I took the chicken thighs off the grill too, so the chicken thighs are gonna be for meal prep. Probably we'll have salad for dinner tomorrow with chicken on the top because there's so much lettuce coming out of the garden. It's the perfect time to enjoy salad for dinner as long as we can. I just planted a couple days ago another succession of lettuce, so hopefully we'll have lettuce all summer long as long as it will stay without bolting. I have found that I can keep lettuce from turning bitter for most of the year as long as I keep it really watered and I keep planting it. Now I'm going to put these yummy juices in there because I want all that flavor because my dressing isn't quite as flavorful as I was hoping. This would be a really good pasta salad to bring to a potluck or something like that because 
it will hold up really well. And it's a little bit lighter than your traditional, like American style mayonnaise based pasta salad. I do love that, that too, but this has got a little twist on a nice summer pasta salad. I'm gonna get all that chicken in that dressing so that has a little bit more flavor than just salt and pepper. Has a lot of good veggies and a good amount of crunch from those peanuts. I'm gonna put it back in this bowl because this is the bowl that has a lid that I can store in my fridge. Let's see if it fits. Whatever doesn't fit, we'll enjoy for dinner. Oh, I think I can get it all to fit. Yeah. I do need to do a final taste test with all the ingredients together. I have not done that yet. I'm gonna pop this in the fridge to chill for a little bit because it's a little early for dinner so that it'll be nice and chilled. Everything will be the same temperature and it will make a delicious dinner. Mm -hmm. So good. It would be better it had more peanut butter in it, but that's okay. It is still very, very delicious. And that just means I need to put peanut butter on my grocery list. Peanut butter is not something that I stock up on. If you've seen my pantry tours, you know that I keep a lot of ingredients on hand, but we don't go through a lot of peanut butter and peanut butter can go bad. So I don't like to stock up on a bunch of peanut butter in case it goes bad on me. Well, friend, I'm excited to eat that for dinner tonight. It's gonna to be perfect. We'll probably sit outside and enjoy the garden. It's like the perfect temperature out today. I think the high was like 66 or 67 overcast, just like the perfect temperature to eat dinner outside. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. Don't forget to check out the description box for all sorts of links down there. I'm really excited about my little what are bee cups, my pollinator cups, and this recipe. Because I think if you follow the recipe, <laughs> it will be a 10 out of 10. I would say this is probably, well, I'll put a bunch of hot sauce on the top of mine, which will elevate it. So I'd probably say it's a solid 6.5. And then with a dousing of hot sauce, <laughs> it'll be a seven. It definitely has some room for improvement, but I love chicken and veggies and that Asian flavor, I think it's delicious. So I think it's gonna be really good. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend. Oh, I can pop a couple of my other videos here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. Bye friend.